uh, and if the, uh, if, the, if the resources are not scalable, uh, and the scalability usually when we think about like mass adoption, it's horizontal scalability, right? If it's, if it's not possible to make horizontal scalability, then this uh, service most likely will be congested and slow, right, on, on any type of induction. So that's why I think uh, stable chains are important here, because on stable chains, we can get the, uh, the, the promise of uh, horizontal scalability, uh, we can have payments on stable currencies, and also this protocol uh, uh, can uh, basically forward the, uh, uh, the current uh, dev tools and, uh, and use them for uh, um, uh, for applications on top of the stable coins, right? So this native stable coin, basically they are protected from volatility, right? When we think about DAI, today it's one DAI, tomorrow most likely it will be one DAI, right? It's not protected from black swan type of events, when like DAI can collapse uh, because of these unprotocols flaws, right? Uh, which is which is possible. But it's, it's, it's quite protected from the uh, uh, volatility and because of the mechanism behind the DAI. Right? So we are basically encouraging this uh, stabilization mechanisms and making this DAI more usable for, 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 for some applications. The, the idea of this, uh, uh, of this uh, stable chain is not possible without having bridges. Right? We started to develop bridges at the UN network uh, in 2018 and actually we had one of the first uh, interoperability protocol live. Uh, we made it to make a native token on the side chain more accessible to um, define infrastructure uh, on mainnet. Uh, and uh, when we started to think about this idea, we figured out that the bridge that we have between Ethereum and side chains can actually be a part of the consensus of the side chain. Right? When we think about consensus engines, it's it's hard to imagine that the consensus engine will get events from external system. Right? For example, in Bitcoin, we have you know one block every 10 minutes, 12.5 bitcoins. It's hard to imagine that some external party can say to consensus, okay, print uh, you know, 1 million bitcoins for me. Uh, and that's something that we actually appreciate in bitcoin, that it's not possible. But when we think about use cases like XDAI, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually very important. So the concept theoretically is known as a hard spoon, when you can extend a, a token to another network, but without competing with a, uh, original network and to extend the uh, features of, of this token. In this case, DAI, which is uh, uh, which requires to use Ether on mainnet and also competing for computational resources with all other apps, is moved by, by, by users to, to a sidechain and can be used uh, with the same value but in different form to build different applications, but at the same time. So the supply of the DAI is not uh, increased when you produce the DAI from uh, uh, main to a side chain. Right, so the, uh, when we, we, we actually created this idea on, on uh, in Berlin Hackathon, and in October we uh, created uh, the, fr the first prototype um, of uh, and launched the network. So since then, uh, the, the network was uh, adapted by, uh, by, by several wallets. I'd like to mention Bernal Wallet, which is kind of was a very uh, new way of onboarding uh, people in the Ethereum space because in Bernal Wallet, everything uh, uh, you do is in the web browser, right? And the uh, uh, burner wallet is making onboarding very simple because it's not asking you for you know, cre creating uh, passwords, remembering passwords, remembering seed phrase, making backups. You just start to open the website and start to use. So the Paqueto, the, the team from Portugal, they implement kind of the same mechanic in, uh, uh, in iOS and Android. Uh, and basically, these are uh, XZ first wallets. So they were built by community. Uh, actually used uh, very successfully uh, on East Denver and East New York. So uh, on East Denver, it was the largest crypto pop-up economy uh, in the world in the history of crypto. So it's uh, basically since 2008, it was the largest gathering where people used crypto uh, in daily life. Like thousands of people used it, right, to, to buy food and drinks. So that's what a big success for Burner World. And now Burner World Board is evolving to the platform for building that, right? So when we started this side chain, uh, like with many, many protocols, it started like only with you know sm very small set of validators. So we started this QA. We were one of the first validators, and after some uh, respect, uh, respectable names on the space joined us, like Giveth and MakerDAO uh, and, and and some other companies. Right. So we uh, basically started this network to, to um, uh, as an experiment. And now there are 10 validators, some validators are validators on other networks like 
you know, plasmas and, uh, and so forth. So the, this uh, type of consensus is what we could call uh, exclusive DAO. So this is a DAO managed by participants of this DAO, and they have exclusive right to vote in or vote out validators. It's DAO because all participants of this DAO uh, have equal rights, and there is a threshold, which is also defined by this equal rights, where they can you know, define to vote in or vote out validators. If they don't like validators or applicants, they can, so they can vote them out, and this is an exclusivity. Right? And when we have exclusivity, usually it's not, it's not very censorship resistant. So that's why we, uh, in November 2018, we started uh, to work on a delegated proof of stake uh, on top of XDIE. And this is quite, uh, quite interesting because delegated proof of stake, some people don't like it because you know, in implementations and EOS, you know, some uh, centralization and buying votes uh, under the table. But we think that delegation is actually a very essential way to show reputation, right? Uh, and vote for, uh, for, for respectful validators with your basically with your tokens. So we try to make this delegated proof of stake. And our main uh, and the idea here was to make it in mostly in solidity uh, uh, with uh, uh, as less as possible changes in the uh, underlying uh, uh, Ethereum clients. We're using Parity, and the second client which will support this consensus is uh, Nethermind.net client. So when we think like when, when we think about uh, um, when we think about uh, this type of uh, uh, staking, we also thought that uh, many staking protocols they allow staking only within like one chain. You know, it can be a relay chain, some beacon chain, but all staking happening like in one in one uh, deterministic system, right? So we designed the, our staking token that it's, uh, it's, it lives on, on Ethereum mainnet, right? And then can be uh, bridged uh, our, our using our interoperability protocol to side chains like XDAI. Right, so it allows us to, to make um, uh, this basically horizontal scalability without, um, uh, without diluting this uh, uh, token and by creating like new tokens if you need to, right, and so forth. So one staking token can be used across multiple networks. So networks themselves can be vertic vertically scalable with uh, you know, a small uh, set of validators and low value in the system. Actually, it's, why it's way easier to propose to validators make changes into uh, protocol, consensus, uh, or increase resources. Right, the same with uh, horizontal scalability. Uh, it's, it's possible to uh, uh, engage validators into staking on uh, another system if it's kind of the same staking token, right? So we think that uh, this concept can be used not only on uh, DAI, but for other stable tokens, right? DAI is very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, I use CDP a lot, I regret about it, but I, I, lo I, I love DAI, right? And I feel like when I use it, I feel like, okay, this is, first of all, it's mine created out of nothing, right? Uh, but I can create them myself, right? Without any reserve by anyone, only using, you know, Ethereum tokens and so forth. Uh, but you know, for, for some use cases, uh, for example, if you um, if you talk with uh, some let's say Asian traders, uh, OTC traders, uh, who are making OTC deals uh, uh, fiat uh, to stable tokens, they don't know that they use which token USDT, right? Why? Because USDT is quite easy to OTC in and OTC out. Uh, we, we think that uh, uh, the um, the same uh, the same model can be used for for, for different stable tokens, and we're actually uh, thinking about like, launching XUSDT, but with the same staking token. Right. So all this uh, uh, all these side chains are based on this double token model. This double tokens uh, double, double token model requires to, to have uh, basically two bridges or implementation of bridging within one uh, two bridges within one bridge. So one bridge is uh, for, a, for a native token. For example, native token here in, in, in XDAI is DAI, right? So DAI is bridge. And the second token is a, is a volatile token. And when you think about this concept, it's very natural, right? When we buy, let's say, iPhone, we're paying stable token, right? But shares of April, which represent uh, uh, how companies operating, right? And basically uh, how companies uh, uh, compare to other companies and their, their own coin market cap, it's volatile token. Right? So when we're buying uh, uh, commodities, where we're you know, buying in, in stable tokens, but when we, when we want to play you know, in this uh, shares game, we, 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 we pay shares. We pay in stable tokens for shares. Right? Here, uh, let's say, if you use a platform as a, as a DAP developer, and use it for your DAPs, you know, all transaction fees, uh, uh, all account balances, everything in a stable token, and usually the, the, the market cap of this network, 
will most likely will be with relatively low, right? Because it's, it's represent actual usage, and we know how, 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 how much people actually using blockchain for, for applications, right? 30,000 daily active users is like one of the peak applications for games. That's what we have, right? So most likely these applications will be relatively uh, small, uh, and the market cap will be small, but the value of staking token, which is bridged by another token, can be way bigger, right? Because the staking token can protect bigger value. So that's what we call uh, multi-chain uh, DPoS um, staking. So the staking um, uh, is uh, what we call inclusive. So anyone can be a validator by getting the staking token. Uh, the both tokens are living on uh, uh, on Ethereum mainnet. So we're like Ethereum mainnet first. Even though it's a sidechain, we don't need to basically move to our own ecosystem uh, and uh, compete with the platform. What I saw from, from many you know, smart people and uh, projects which are like moved from, from Ethereum ecosystem to their own ecosystem is that it's naturally starting to compete, right? Because if you have native volatile token, it's a competition, right? No matter what. So one of the I don't know if you see it or not, one of the possibilities which also we explored recently with uh, uh, just kind of one one of the like future plans that we explored recently that we can do uh, uh, and on X die, when we think about this die and one it's locked, right? It, it's sitting on the bridge and basically not used, right? So this die, uh, this die can be can be landed automatically on DeFi DeFi platforms like Compound, right? And make interest. So on this die to X die scenario, when a user sends die to bridge, this X die is minted for the user, so user can start to use it. But the locked die can be uh, compounded uh, on 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 a, on a DeFi platform. Right, and when, when, when a user exits from, from X die to die, this compound that uh, uh, die can be returned back to, to real time, right? And, and sent to a user. And all these things can be, uh, can be made in a, a non-custodial way. Uh, uh, and the, 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 the third and most interesting part here is that when validator actually, when they uh, retrieve this compound die, they can get an interest, and they can get this interest and by staking token and burn. Right? So that's, that's actually when we think about uh, crypto economic mechanisms for tokens, especially projects like in, from 2016, 17, 18, when we didn't know uh, many mechanics besides, you know, oh, let's just use it for, 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 uh, for running applications on a chain, like some other protocol is doing. That's actually is very hard to find. It's very hard to find a loop where, you can, where your token can be like, purchased back uh, and, uh, and 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 and, uh, and burned uh, without any like external uh, external sources, right? If you have an offline business and you have source of revenue which you can use to buy back your token and burn, that's fine. That's totally working. But to make this mechanic within the um, you know within the basically public ecosystem of public networks is quite hard. We don't know what compound will be in the future, but at least for now this model is uh, totally usable. And it's, it's usable within this uh, uh, structure of you know, multi-chain, right? So we can have two chains, bridges, fun slot, used on another chain by that developers when they return, in, uh, the die return interest, uh, uh, interest user to, to facilitate uh, the stages of this network who are protecting the security of this network. So one of the uh, one of the second important things that we're working on actually is uh, bringing uh, uh, private transactions on the sidechain. And when, when you think about uh, private transactions and uh, ZK bug based mixers, usually you have to have some denominations of this mixer, right? Like one if 0.1 if and so forth. But it's not, it's not very convenient to use, right? If you think about like merchant and accepting this, and you have basically, uh, every day you have, you have to change prices, right? Or do it uh, the way that it's not, it's not convenient to understand. And uh, here on, on, on DAI, we can, we can deploy basically a, a mixer with like one DAI, five DAI, 10, 50, 100, and implement the same mechanic as we have with cash, right? Okay, from one, from up, from one to 100 uh, uh, dollars, I can combine uh, any amount I need to purchase something, right? So this is something that uh, we're actively working on and working both with uh, creators of mixers and uh, uh, creators of clothes. Yeah, that's uh, my time is up. So I'd like to say that uh, XDI stable chain is uh, one of the first uh, example of the stable chains. It's very uh, convenient to, to have platform usage 
Uh, and then it's very convenient to, to have account balances in the stable currency. And also the volatile mechanic, which we all like when you know, something is going up, uh, is, is good to basically to, to not show to users of this platform. Right when people sending X to each other, they don't care what is protected. Right now they don't care who validates us, uh, most, uh, most of them, right? But in the future they might care what is a staking token, why it's volatile and so forth. So this, um, I'd like you to explore this model, and this model can be used for other ERC-20 tokens. So it's, 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 it's possible to make that if you have an ERC-20 token, which you created in 2017, uh, you can bridge it to a side chain, basically your own autonomous network, and uh, create a small ecosystem where your token can you know, experiment with new crypto mechanics. Thank you very much.